What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Dermy Wormy. I'm coming at you with another video and Throughout the past two years, we've been having a major upheaval within the video game industry itself. So we've had layoffs going across the tech industry, primarily focused within the video game industry itself. And it's getting so bad that there's an actual Wikipedia article pointing out all the different layoffs within the past year from 2023 to 2024. And it's massive. Why is this stuff happening? Well, for one, gaming practices, uh, pushes for, you know, microtransactions, gamers being given the subpar products. On top of that, overinflated budgets, too many individuals actually going throughout the game itself. Just all, all sorts of numerous things going on within the gaming industry, leading to massive layoffs going throughout the entire gaming industry all around. I mean, I've talked about a bunch of these, whether it's Sega, whether it's Epic Games, whether it's Twitch, all, all sorts of these areas haven't seen people getting laid off left, right and center because, well, AAA industry is way too big and way too bulky. But you know what you do to fix this? You know what you do to fix this ongoing issue? You go on strike. That's right. SAG AFTRA declares possible mocap and voice actor strike as AI becomes the target of gaming job upheaval at GDC 2024. Now, I know this was actual uh, panel within the GDC itself. I actually covered a lot of this one. I don't believe it was this one itself, but I did point this out in my GDC breakdown that yes, they have a panel all about going to strike and forming a union. Now is the time. Workers and games are ready for unions. You also had change the rules, co-ops, unions, and other game labor structures. They've had countless numbers of these over at the GDC itself. They did have at least one on the game industry layoffs and being prepared for that, but they had roughly three or four on actual unionization within the game industry itself. And now they're talking about a possible strike within the game industry. Now, when it comes to mocap workers and voice actors, that's usually work that can be done towards the tail end of the actual gaming process itself and actually making the video game itself. Usually these are done like one, two days of, of actual getting the game ready to be made and everything like that. It's, it's over and out, usually very simple to get done. So not being able to do mocap right away or waiting till the very end to do mocap isn't going to be affecting the gaming industry as much as it would affect, you know, Hollywood and stuff because they're not really reliant on voice actors or mocap workers at all within the game industry. It's, they're, they're just not. But when you go through a lot of this stuff, it's all over the usage of AI, similar to what Hollywood was going through. They wanted to control AI. The unions wanted to have the power over the AI. They didn't want Hollywood to have the power over AI. They didn't want the mega corporations to have the power over AI. So they actually knew an area to strike when it came to those strikes over there. This time, it's not going to work the same way unless you have every little individual within the gaming industry unionize and decide to go on strike. But you start going through some of this. Specifically, SAG is seeking to prevent game studios from using AI to generate synthetic performances without consent or compensation for actors. There are concerns that companies could leverage AI voice cloning and motion capture technology to create digital replicas of performers circumventing the need to hire them for new projects. The reality is the gaming industry doesn't need performers. The gaming industry doesn't need individuals going around, you know, doing voice work or anything like that. And in fact, one of my favorite games is still Pokemon. Um, we don't really have voice actors within the Pokemon games. Dialogue boxes. A lot of video games can just simply, you know, hey, we like using voice actors. We like using mocap and everything like that. Why don't we just go back to dialogue boxes? Why don't we just go back to, you know, uh, programming every single body instead of, you know, doing mocap or thing, something like that. Probably save you a lot of money, actually. Probably be a whole lot cheaper than doing a lot of things you're doing right now. Just got to say, uh, not the same industry as Hollywood that they're going on here. We're doing everything we can to convince and bring pressure on these companies so that they will actually come back to the table and make a fair deal for 
all the performers who work for them, said Duncan Carbertree, Ireland, sag aftras chief negotiator. sag aftra urges that any use of an actor's voice, likeness, or performance data should require their explicit permission and fair residual payments. However, major game publishers like Activision Blizzard, Electronic Arts, and others have reportedly pushed back against sag aftras proposed AI restrictions. And there's a reason for that, actually. Even though you might have that after and all these gaming industries trying to fight for a strike, fight for unionization, doing all this stuff, when you actually come over to the GDC page itself, and I'll just point you up right, right here, and this is just AI that I typed in. This isn't even like their large language models and other panels that they had on things similar to AI. All you got to do is type in AI, and it's not perfect, I know, there's at least 66 instances of AI being used for a panel. And I mean, right here, right away, AI Summit, making the most nav mishes and FPS games from Crisis 3 to Hunt Shadow. They want to start integrating AI into gaming. They are trying to integrate AI into the gaming industry. They're working their hardest to start pushing AI within the gaming industry all around because it would actually make gaming development easier and make and probably cut down on costs. So you got a much different perspective on one side versus the other side. And then on top of that, when it comes to sag after and all these individuals actually trying to go on strike, they don't have the same amount of power that they did within Hollywood, within TV, within all these other areas. Because when it came to the rioters or actors strike, those strikes actually had leverage because they needed to be on screen. They needed to be on scene. They need, They were the important part. They were the thing actually producing the product. When it comes to games, when it comes to the gaming industry, they're not as important. That's not the important aspect of it. What's important is the actual game itself. What's important is the aspects of the video game. And a lot of people are perfectly fine just going back to old video games, perfectly fine with playing games that you actually have to read and work out yourself. They don't really need video games being made into a movie scene or video games acting like a this cinematic masterpiece. They can be very fine with just uh, dialogue boxes. So you're at a very different outcome when it comes to a whole video game strike versus the Hollywood strike. There's a lot of different moving parts going on here, but it would be funny to see the whole video game industry within the AAA industry itself go on strike while you have games like Power World and Hell Divers blowing up within the indie scene being more successful than a lot of AAA video games are right now and actually doing well and appeasing gamers and making gamers very happy while your AAA industry is kind of blowing up all over the place. But I'm going to leave it there, guys. Let me get you guys' thoughts on all this down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it out, friends, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for every time I put out a new video and go live. And I'll see you guys all on the next one. Bye for now.